Hey fam, you're welcome to my testimony challenge. This is Vivian, in case you're seeing me for the very first time. And in this first episode of my miscarriage journey, the miscarriage journey, not my miscarriage journey. <laughs> so I want to start to share with you guys and I want you to listen. And as you listen, listen to the spirit because I'm sure God wants someone to hear this testimony and he wants to reach out to you through this testimony, okay? So be in the spirit while we enjoy this story. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I got married, I already um, heard from the Lord that I was going to be with a child on the same month that I will be getting married, right? So December, I got married December 4th, and then by the end of December, I realized that, oh, I was already pregnant, and I was so excited, super, super excited that the word of the Lord had come to pass, you know, but then on a new year of the next year, 1st January, you know, I woke up one morning to see the Lord after we had a good night, family time. Nothing happened. I wasn't feeling any pain, no issue. I just woke up to ease myself and I saw blood. Guys, <laughs> it was so horrible because a lot of things were coming to my heart, but this is the promise of the Lord and all of that. To cut a long story short, we went to the hospital and they were like, oh, you've lost the pregnancy. And at that time, they couldn't even run a scan to say, oh, this is um, um how the baby is or something. Because for just five months, they call it chemical pregnancy. So I lost that one. I mourned that one. Like, I really, really mourned that one. And that was it so that was january of that year and then april of that same year i took in again miraculously miraculously i took in again and then you know i was super excited i was giving god praise for it and then i went about doing my thing in that um journey in that time doing my evangelism going to places and just cool you know i had a project i was running that time so i was just running around trying to make sure the project was successful and then I, I was cool, you know, so, but we kept checking, six weeks, we went for scan, they said, oh, you are pregnant with twins, I was like, Jesus, this is a restoration, God, of what I've lost, so, seventh week we went, and yeah, because we keep browsing, myself and my husband, we kept checking, and from the research we got, we realized that, oh, from sixth week to seven weeks, we should be able to see the fertile pool, but on the seventh week we went, no fertile pool yet, no heartbeat yet, I'm wearing even, but I'm like, okay, Maybe the child is delaying. Then on the ninth week we went and the, the radiographer was like, Did you do anything to the pregnancy? I said, How? So because the fataco is not there, the habit is not there, but the two sacks were there and I was feeling pregnant, you know, boobs uh, were heavy, all of those signs, you know. I was like, really? We kept trusting God. We said this can't this can't happen. And then ninth week, tenth week was when you know we began to really, really got, get worried. So we went to deep went to different places to check and they were like oh this is called blighted oven blighted oven is where the sack is there or the sack is empty so two sacks guys two sacks that were supposed to carry two babies so <laughs> good mm. were empty and I've, I've carried them for two months plus yeah nine weeks is about two months plus with all the feelings of pregnancy with all the excitement of restoration and all of that but guys it became so clear at this time that we would have to evacuate the pregnancy that was what the, the doctor said what evacuate my miracle babies twins anyways yeah that happened and we had to summon the courage and say okay let god have his way and even though i didn't go for the evacuation i opted for the the, the tablet to take for you know the, the baby to, to flow out it was still very horrible it was more painful than labor pains like I, I almost passed out my husband was crying like literally crying like am i just going to lose my wife the pain enters to the brain severe level pain for the baby to go baby you don't have pains you're passing through and then we paid money in the hospital to be taken care of and all of that guys you can't imagine those times you really can't imagine except you were there you are there and i pray that you will never be in that place in the name of jesus christ amen so it was terrible it was one of the most horrible moments of my life i passed through the pain for days the blood thick blood they were just flowing out and that was how we lost that pregnancy remember god made me a promise you're gonna be with child the month you got married okay we'll still get to that maybe in the next episode of this video okay so do well to subscribe please follow our story god will say something to you that will stand in your life eternally so that was how we lost that pregnancy and i won't tell you lie i was really really down for days morning crying it's so painful because when you are with child people like me that I'm, I'm emotional i had already started to bond with this baby this you know fetus and all of that so i had that time of mourning 
So that passed, that was, um, I, I conceived April and then lost the baby June, right? Then on July, my menstruation came out, but it wasn't so, it wasn't flowing very well. And I was also bothered, like, okay, well, I hope something was, hmm. I say, guys, it will never be your portion. You will hear stories you've never heard in your life, like me, I don't know what is blighted for me. All I know before now is that you get married, you get pregnant, I mean, the sacks are there, you thank God, and then you give birth, right? So, I, so many things I never knew. I experienced it while I was passing through this journey. Okay, so the July, uh, my menstruation wasn't so clear and I began to hear that, oh, it's possible um, that the, the tissues of the baby were still there, so it must have blocked some things. And that was why the doctors were suggesting strongly that it's better we go for evacuation than taking tablets so that they will be very sure that everything has been taken out. If you hear stories, it's like, if the bone is there, ah, that one, you're going to die, you're not going to have birth. Not like you're going to die, like you're not going to give birth again, ever. I was like, I'll go with my feet, I'm not being evacuation. So that was it. So July, the menstruation wasn't so clear. Just ran for two days, dark, and I was like, hey, maybe something has blocked somewhere, like they said. Anyways, went to see a doctor and he was like, it's okay, you'll be fine. Let's see how next month goes. And guys, God helping me in my weakness, I switched over to my other personality in Christ, the Christ in me. Entered into people worship, listening to messages, boosting my faith and all of that, confessing, you know, who I am in Christ and all of that. I was just, to, to be honest, God knows how to show us mercy so that our season will not pass us because if our season passes us, uh, if you pass, if your season passes you, oh, it will take time for the season to return back. So God was so kind to me. I was in that mood of just praising and worshiping God. And then the next month, August, the menstruation came so powerful. In fact, I was in church. I was already menstruating the previous day. I started menstruating the previous day before that Sunday I went to church. And I, I had my pad, my normal pad on. They went to church, there was this song that this brother sang. I have the way I was just singing in the spirit, jumping. Really, really, really in the spirit. Guys, after the worship session, I sat down. I couldn't stand up again. Blood over flew everywhere. I mind you guys, before that time, people already knew in my church that I was pregnant, like because I was already feeling somehow as before I lost the second pregnancy. Because it was about three months, so the signs were there. You know, so but they didn't know I've lost the baby. Maybe they were still seeing me as someone that was pregnant. So when the blood came out, stained the chair I was sitting on in, in, uh, in the church, I was so ashamed. I was like, oh, what embarrassment is this? So when the blood stained the chair, I was so, so, so like, oh, the few persons I was really suspecting that I could be pregnant, we now see that, oh, she is not even pregnant, or maybe she's having a miscarriage. Anyways, that's not the concern now. I had to get some stuff from my fellow sister, covered my body and went to her house. While I was staying at my sister's house, close to the church, I was still in the spirit. I was really, really still in the spirit. And I began to have a knowing, this sensation from within my spirit that, oh, something is on the way. God is about to visit me. I'm going to have a child soon. This knowing, like, you can't buy it. It's just given by the spirit, right? And true to God's leading, true to, the, true to what I sensed, guys, that was the last menstruation I had for that year. So before you know it, um, I got pregnant a day. So guys, that was how I conceived for the third time. I was like, Jesus, we are just so true. We are just so sweet. Myself and my husband, we are just rejoicing. We are just so happy. And what next? We had to go for a scan again, right? So we went for a scan on the sixth week. And what did this scan say? Watch out for the part two. I will complete the story so that it won't be so long. Thank you. Bye.